he's been he's been looking up at the stars. He's been walking on the beach, and he's got a trade philosophy for us. Trade yeah. philosophy, mate. Uh, in the the wee hours of Wednesday morning, I, a lot went through my head watching that roller coaster ride of Australia at Edgbaston, drop pulling off one of the the famous cricketing victories. Still on cloud nine from that, and one that came through my head was quite a simple one, and it's just that. It sort of touches on what you mentioned before around if you have 15 trades or 18 trades or have you sold off for Feeder and Cleary and Latrell Mitchell and all these key players that you'll want back in your side past post the origin buy period. And it's pretty simply, mate, that if you're making a trade at the moment, just ask yourself the question, is this player going to be in my final team by the end of season? Because if they're not, and they're a stopgapper option, and you're running low on trades, you go, well, I might be stuck with this bloke. We see injuries later in, in the year, and things go wrong, and all of a sudden, you're running out of, of trades, you might be stuck with them. Whereas, a week like this week, you might go someone like Cam Munster or Reese Walsh, players who, all right, they might not give you that round 19, third major buy coverage, but you're using one trade for a player that, more than likely won't be leaving your team for the rest of the season. Yeah. So, as I said, mate, pretty simple, but just, just ask yourself that question, basically every trade between now and the end of the year, because it's so, so vital. Now, over the next two to three weeks, we're still looking at round 19, even round 20 to a less degree, and when we still need to plug a few holes and get numbers on the field, uh, but it still becomes important, and once we get past round 19, 20, it becomes... Is your keeper or not? Because before you know it, you have no trades left and you're going to go, oh, no, shit, I've got Sandon Smith and Richie Kennard in my team and I can't get rid of him. Keeper, Sandor. Keeper. Keeper. <laughs> you heard it here first. Good shout to me. Absolutely love it. Definitely something we all need to keep in mind there. Now, you got some stats that caught those, as you said in the notes, beautiful eyes. Uh, the first one, Joey Manu. I'm a little bit nervous. What do you got for me? Uh, don't be nervous, mate. It's exciting. It's just... Like, Joey Manu at fullback is super coach perfection. I yeah. think he was quoted after the game. I hope he was, because if he wasn't, I'm putting words in his mouth, but saying, I just love running the football. And he starts back it up. 29 If run- Joey didn't say that, his football's been saying it for three years. Yeah, exactly. So. I feel like I'm not going too far out on a limb on that one. Against the Knights, 29 runs, nine tackle breaks, six offloads, a try and a line break. 117 points. Like, his only major attacking stats were the try and the line break all in the one play. If he played fullback every week, he would be pretty close to a set and forget captain. I know we said about a few things, but he's just in a league of his own, super coach wise, when he plays fullback and all he does is think run. So, if Teddy weren't to back up this week from Origin, if he gets battered and bruised and bit, he becomes <coughs> such a big captaincy option at fullback. At centre, it's a different story, so I wouldn't necessarily rush to buy him at centre, but beast. He heard you. <laughs> Teddy will have 31 runs on Sunday. Teddy, back yeah, up good. From Origin. Um, all right, Joe Manu, love that. Let's talk Tyrone Peachy. Obviously, I was there at the Penrith Panthers. The music is stopped and Peach, unlucky you don't have a chair at the moment. What's doing there? Boy, do I want to see the Panthers give Stephen Crichton a little rest. I don't, I don't think they will, but if they were to rest him after Origin Tour to make me a happy boy. I thought you'd be devastated to see Stephen Crichton not play. No. <laughs> Tyrone Peachy, he's done such a great job, earned a stack of cash. He's averaging well. 74 points last week against the Cowboys, which obviously all the Origin stars out. Stats, 20 runs. Three offloads, one forced dropout, seven tackle busts, 17 tackles. Jesus. That's Nico Hines but playing centre. Yeah, that's wild. How's that for stats? So he'd be coming up if he could get a run this week against the, the leaky Knights defence. One more price rise in him, just it'd be glorious. But as it stands, he's outside the 17 and buying on getting uh, rested, he won't be playing, so might be ambitious. Now, this one I'm very interested to hear your take on because I've had a few few messages from people. Um, and I thought he might feature in your stats deep dive, so we haven't got questions at the back about him. But AJ Brimson, a lot of people asking questions about him. His last game, he had an absolute blinder. Mm. Um, I've always found AJ to be a bit of an enigma in Supercoach. I can never seem to pick the right moments to get him. But there's always a couple of weeks of season where I go, 
fuck, if I would have done it now, it would have yeah. been unreal. It's normally the back end of the season. Yeah. I remember Titans last footy. year, I didn't, end, yeah, I didn't end up grabbing him, but I was so, so keen on him. And he ended up finishing with a three and average of 100 or it might have been yeah. more or something. He went nuts. It's just always fitness with, with him, isn't he? Yeah. AJ Brimson, like, God, he can find an injury. But he's 524K. He averaged 64 last year, 61 the year prior, and 74 back in 2021. Like, when fit and firing and on the field playing 80 minutes, he's a super coach gun. So... I looked at his five games this season, non-injury impacted. He's averaging 68 points. Now, not mesmerising by any means, but still really good numbers looking at his price. The issue with AJ Brimson is, aside from his injury history, he's 18th man for the Maroons. So if he was to be 18th man for the Maroons for game three, mm. he wouldn't be available for round 19, which is a big factor in why people are buying him. What's your thoughts? I hadn't thought about that, to be honest yeah. with you. I hadn't even considered that. Yeah. Not, not that I was looking at AJ, but uh, I hadn't really considered that. But, yeah, it's a good shout, isn't it? So, the, he's 524K, break even 57. Like, Broncos this week and then the Raiders. He's one that I'd like, like to see him get through a couple of games. He won't have gone up much in price. and get him round 19 against the Dolphins if he's available. The issue is we sort of need numbers this week. Yeah. So, people want to go early, but... You know, when you add in injury risk and potentially missing 19 due to origin, it makes it hard. Yeah, very tough. Uh, Daniel Tupo is your next one. He's a guy that I was actually having a look at last night. He's, uh, by his standards, good God, he is cheap at the moment. Oh. Very, very appealing. Just getting his numbers up now. 442K. Oh, given, uh, given away, Tupes. I was really tempted at start here when I thought the Roosters were going to be good at footy at starting him, uh, starting the year with him at a pretty hefty price. Try to tell you. <coughs> yeah, thankfully didn't. But 442K, his first game back from injury, scored 80, 23 runs. And like the fact that the Roosters have been... 47 in base. Yeah. Jesus. I know, in his first game back. And I looked at that and went, Tupu, super cheap. The Roosters, I... Like a, they can only get better, surely. But then I looked at it. Seven of his nine scores have been under 50 this season. Yeah. That is like... For a proven gun of super coach for many years, not necessarily like super elite, but just always rock solid. So last year averaged 58, 59 the year before that, 71 the year before that, 56 the year before that. But especially when you look at head-to-head -head finals time, he's a player who his base is always 30, 35 plus, like some of the best in Supercoach. He's always going to give you a rock-solid 40 to 50 even if he doesn't score. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I oh, mate, mate, he's tempting, but just not offering round 19 coverage. I'm, I'm not so sure. But I also think if you are someone that owns Billy Smith as well, to have that entire left edge of a side that's not going oh. too well, it, it could be absolute diamonds, but... Good God, there's a good chance you find some rocks there. I wonder... What do you do? So, like, he scored three tries in his first four games. Billy Smith came in. No, there was enough stretch after that where, like, he... He's had four games since with a big injury impact period in the middle where he didn't score. But, yeah. What is his break evens 25, so... Just a lot of scores under 50. Yeah, like, yeah. But, like... And once again, I know it's our favourite saying, but fuck, there's a chance we look back in four weeks and go, God, it would have been a yeah. good time to get on. But it's a huge punt to take. And I do, for, for me, I think the fact that a lot of us have Billy Smith, that would play into my, that you're using yeah. half your CTWs on an edge that might not get footy. And put it this way, if, if you picked him this week and he was a decent extra number, a fair bit of cash elsewhere, and he was your sixth <coughs> on the wing for the run home, for a rooster side that historically finished well in the back end of the year, like, you could just play him in their real good matchups and sit him in others. And in any week they had to play him, despite not having a great year, I'd still feel pretty comfortable playing him. And I mean, like, I'm, I'm having a look at it now. Like, I could, like, I've still got um, Kiraz, but I don't think I can do it anymore. He's just not himself at the moment. Like, I could go Kiraz to Toops this week and poll, you know, 30K or whatever, but then just have Daniel Tupu as, as you said, my yeah. fifth or sixth choice. Yeah. 
I have jumped this fence like three <laughs> times in the last 15 minutes. I've got no idea what he's doing. Uh, the last guy's a guy that I've had for a number of weeks. And I've been very, very happy with him. Clint Gutherson. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be at two Parramatta games in the last eight weeks. Yeah. He's got 100 at both of them. I think he's got 130 at both of them. It was sensational. Uh, mate, you got a question next to him. Can we elevate him into super coach, elite fullback tier yet? What yeah, do you reckon? Yeah, so another hindsight hero, but... Oh, Want him so bad last week, but I had Buller and Teddy. And I was like, like, didn't need to trade Buller. Obviously, and Teddy was, had a three round average of about 100. I'm like, now nah, I don't really need to trade him either. Didn't do it anyway. 132. Now, look, I won't bore you with his stats, mate, but I'll bore you actually with his last few years stats. Averaging 78 this year, 68 the year before, 75 the year before, 70 the year before. We think of elite fullbacks, we think Tom Trebojevic, Latrell Mitchell, James Tedesco, obviously I'm a bit of a down here this year, but... Tyrell be- Sloan. Tyrell Sloan. <laughs> like, at what point does Gutho get the super coach respect he deserves in becoming in this elite tier of fullback category? Because that's four years of tremendous numbers. I will say this about the last few weeks, and I've had him, I've been stoked with him, but... Fuck me, like I reckon he scored three of his six tries in the last few weeks out of dummy half as well. Yeah. He still he still just does Yeah, I don't know. He when I look at him, he doesn't look like an elite fullback to me. An elite super coach fullback. And, and, when I watch him, but the stats, I mean it's hard, it's kinda of hard to push back on at the moment. And that's where it's hard to separate your NRL eyes from your super coach eyes yeah. because I mean, I've got all the time in the world for Garth as a fullback, but, you know, if we're talking elite, elite NRL fullback, you've still probably got him. I'm freaking Parramatta reckon he didn't have enough X Factor a couple of months ago. Uh, and one of them moving to 5'8 or some shit. Anyway, super coach wise, though, you just got to look at the, the raw numbers and, yeah. and they're there. And things like push over trice and dummy half, it's because he's such a high volume, high intensity fullback who is just in everything, in yeah. a really good attacking side. They rack up and, yeah. I, and that's the big difference, isn't it? Like, especially when you put your super coach eyes on because he is so keen and he brings so much energy, he's so mm. fit to be everywhere and everything. Compare him to KP, for example. KP chimes in here and there. Yeah. Gutho's almost over involved, but it's what you want from a super coach. Exactly. So, yeah, just just a bit of respect on, on, the, on the King Gutho name in super coach circles, I think, mate. I think it's, it could be time to elevate him.